Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, the redhead Mm. with so much beauty coming right at you and a fat cat (laughs) here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Razor Blade, Uh. also known as Beatrice. Hey, everybody. Let's get into the episode. But before we do, I have to remind everybody, um, please, would you hide your wife and hide your kids? This is a politically incorrect podcast we are clearly out of control we say bad words we have dumb opinions and we are not afraid to share them with you and so if you're so full of you you might want to find yourself a little dumpster hunter but if you're not and you're ready to party in the valley Uh. welcome to this dumpster (laughs) and if you are ready to party go follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we have so much bonus content Mm. up on there that's like where the real party is ad free episodes you get them before everybody else so many perks yes it's also the best way to support us like if you love us we hear so many good things from you thank you for that if you love us and want us to continue to do what it is that we do please consider supporting us on patreon please please, thank thank you you. and if you are watching on youtube first of all thank you you look beautiful today Day. I mean, we attract what we are. Yeah. So of course, they're beautiful. Hottie McCotties. Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Everything you do really helps us to grow in the algorithm and in the dumpster. Yeah. So thank you in advance. Thank you. Uh, All right. Let's get into this trash can trash fire of an episode of the valley girl things are heating up in the valley a little bit yeah i think some things are lurking behind the scenes and i hope we get to see it yeah fall out but well but before we do what do you have any takeaways some primary thoughts have you been ruminating on something that happened on the valley um i'm starting to like luke a little bit more i think he's like a stand-up guy he's not meant for la Mm -mm. i think he's don't want to be there no i think he's good for Kristen. i'm kind of liking Kristen a little bit i know people hate her and stuff or whatever but like i i'm kind of feeling for her everybody's still going off on her and i'm like can we just like chill uh why are we all like dogpiling yeah. on her. It's it's very terrible. Yeah, I'm not liking it. I don't like it either. Mm-hmm. My main thought and or question is why Michelle thinks because she's Iranian and Mexican, she can't be racist. I mean, is that what like you're actually saying? Yeah. And I don't want to get into like a whole conversation or politics or anything like that. But I'm like, who do you think you are? You don't think you can be a bigot? Mm-hmm. And why isn't anybody actually talking about the shit that she did say, which is the don't say gay bill like the things that she said that caused the conversation that janet instigated why aren't we actually talking about that right versus dragging Kristen for saying something that she shouldn't have said but that she heard right that doesn't make any sense to me yep so i'm just gonna call that out at the top yeah i agree with you okay i think it's hypocritical and i think that michelle's probably a closet republican or like probably right leaning yeah. That's what I think. And I don't want to judge her for that. No, I don't care. But <laughs> I don't want to judge her for that. But I'm just like, what What makes you think that you are somehow precluded from being a bad person because of like the race right. of your parents? Right. Agreed. You're from America, Agreed. right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm just like, oh, miss me with that horse I shit. Know. Thank you very much. LA bullshit. Let's get into it. Yep, let's get into it. So the start of the episode is like the resolution conclusion of the Capri dinner. Like everybody's still going off. Capri. Oh, whatever. Capri. Capri. Capri sun dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the conclusion of right. that. And so everyone's still going off on Kristen. I felt really bad for her because she's literally like apologizing over and over again. I'm sorry for repeating it. Like, I'm sorry for saying it. I didn't mean to offend anybody. And everybody's still going off. Specifically Michelle and Jesse. Like Michelle stands up Mm -hmm. and is like screaming at Kristen. And I'm just like, why aren't we going after Janet? Yeah. Her bitch ass. Why aren't we exploring? Because it doesn't matter that she said it. It only matters that it was said on camera. So stupid. It only matters that Kristen weaponized it and they were outed as being Republicans, I Dumb. guess. I guess that's the problem. So it's, yeah, it's it's obvious why. Because they're worried about their reputation and how other people are going to see them and whether it's going to cost them money and their <sighs> business. Pathetic. Yeah. So stupid. And then Michelle, like, literally tells Kristen, I want you to pretend 
like you made it up. Like Kristen's like, I, you want me to do you that? You want me to lie and say I didn't hear that? And she's like, yes, yeah. this is your moment. I'm like, do that. the fuck? I'm like, why would I ever do that? What is wrong with you, Michelle? I know. I know you're pretty and that's great. And you have yeah. a beautiful daughter. You seem like a great mother. But what the fuck is wrong with you? It's because she's unhappy with Jesse, And so she's taking it out on everybody yeah, else. Yeah, but even in her interstitial, she's sitting there like, this is it for me and Kristen. I know. Like, I can be civil <laughs> like, when I'm around her, but like we're never going to be close again when it sounds like Kristen has been the only person in that entire friend group that has protected her which yeah. I know Kristen then turns around and threatens her with but uh -huh. it sounds like Kristen has been pretty good to her although again she was a baboos and a dummy yeah by saying that out loud in the middle of the party on camera but uh, yeah I guess I don't like Michelle I don't either and I fucking hate Janet I know I hate her a big old see you next Tuesday yeah, I'm not buying anything you're trying to sell lady mm -hmm. and I'm sorry if you're stressed out because you're pregnant I guess there haven't been any other women on the planet ever who have been pregnant <laughs> I know come on real. if you started this shit at least own it yep no uh Janet gives me mad Karen yeah, vibes, oh, 100 like percent Karen, hardcore Karen mm -hmm. vibes, um, and then Jackson is interstitial. Says like, I think there's an element to truth from everybody's side on mm -hmm. this stuff, but he says something interesting where he's like, I think Janet and I are very similar, yeah. and everybody's calling it out online, and I'm like, ooh, that's not a good thing, no. <laughs> not a good thing at and all. And then he calls her a silent killer, which yeah. is kind of reminiscent. Of Erica Jane calling Lisa, Lisa Vanderpump a sniper from the side. Oh. I think he's trying to tell everybody that Janet is not a good person mm. and that she's very conniving. And here she has set this entire table of fire with her bullshit and she gets to walk away completely unscathed. My hope and my prayer is that as the season continues, she's going to get outed. Please. And we're going to see her for exactly who she is. Well, even Jack, or not Jack, Zach calls mm -hmm. it out in his interstitial where he's like, Janet's definitely the instigator. Mm -hmm. So he's like calling it out. I'm like, this is probably going to be a recurring theme throughout yeah. the season if they're just starting it out like this. Right. So I hope Janet gets her comeuppance for sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And then we have... um a scene after the whole Capri dinner and everybody's going off on Kristen. Everybody hates her, whatever. We have Brittany and Jax hanging out with their kid Cruz. And I guess they're yeah. talking about his speech therapy. He needs his speech therapy. Right. My thought about this, Beatrice, was that it was really exploitative. And here's why. Like we were just talking on our recap of Vanderpump Rules, like how your kids are going to go back through the records yeah. and see the things you said, watch the things you did. And I'm like, why are we having this young, you know, three-year-old boy, two-year-old boy on camera struggling with his speech? I just felt like we didn't really need to do all that. Like you could have referenced that mm -hmm. in a conversation without actually showing it. I mean, maybe that's just me as a mom. Like I, I wouldn't be putting my child on camera and I'm just like they and they're just sitting around asking dumb questions and I know they want us to believe that they're really engaged and involved parents but like every time we see them on social media every time we see them doing anything they're like at bars they're partying they're going out to different events I'm like well is your mom like the sole provider to Cruz who's taking care of Cruz because remember in that episode I think maybe two episodes ago, Cruz gets stuck underneath a couch. Yeah. Jax is in some other room. He hears him crying. He doesn't even bother to get the fuck up. It's got to be Mama Brittany who goes yeah. in there and saves Cruz. I'm just like, this whole thing is bad. Like your marriage is bad, which we get to. Mm -hmm. Like how you're parenting. I'm like questioning what you're doing. Yeah, and like the shit that they're saying, they're like, you know, some people think like it's weird or abnormal when your child goes to speech therapy. And like, we're trying to not think that, whatever. But I'm like, I think deep down you guys are embarrassed for some reason Why that you you're three year old. I know it's really gross, mm -hmm. but like it just shows Brittany and Jax's character a little bit mm -hmm. and their vapidity, if I may use your word. Yes. <laughs> the, well, it's not my word, it's a word. Shallow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you always use the good words. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they just it just shows how shallow and fucked up they are for them to even say something like, yeah, like it's kind of weird that he's not saying things normal now. And I'm like, he's fucking three. 
It also shows kind of the absolute dearth of a storyline that they have that they're willing yeah. to like throw Cruz, you know, onto Front Street <clears throat> and his speech therapy and the struggles that he's having. Totally. Like, well, can we focus on your fucked up marriage, though? For and the real. fact that y'all don't have sex and the fact that Britney's out here getting all of these fucked up plastic surgery procedures so that she can somehow be attractive to you because you won't fuck her. Like, can we talk for real for real mm -hmm. or not? Well, and that's like where it's weird because it's talking about speech therapy and then all of a sudden we talk about their sex life mm -hmm. and how Brittany and her interstitials like it's like maybe once or twice a year. And I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And he's obviously getting it from somewhere else. I hope not. I think he is. But I mean, when he is at the county fair with the other guys and he's talking about how it used to be that they were having sex three or four times a day or that he needed to have it three or four times a day, because I'm going to tell you right now, there's no woman on the world that wants to have sex three or four times Sounds a day. Sounds exhausting. It is just not the fucking fact. No. Um, but he wanted to have it three or four times a day. And now they're having it like he doesn't even know if they have it once a month. So I don't even know where I was going with that. But the fact of the matter is, is that their shit is broken. Yeah. And I kind of resent you throwing crews out there so everyone say, look, look at that, instead of taking the deeper dive into the areas that they don't want to show. But they're not going to be able to get away with it. No way. It's I mean, already coming out. They're already trying to do that throughout this whole season, like trying to deflect and like focus on everybody else's Orchestrate problems. Orchestrate, yep. puppeteer. Exactly. Meanwhile, Brittany doesn't even live with Jax right now. Really? No, she moved the fuck out. Oh, I know they're separated. So that's like in present day, she's yeah, moved out. She does not live with him mm -hmm. currently. Good. Yeah. Good. I don't think he cares. No. I don't think he wants her. Uh -uh. I don't think he thinks she's attractive. Mm -mm. I don't think he wants it with her. No. Nope. I think he regrets marrying her. I think he is so ready to be back in his single life. Yeah. With Sandoval and Schwartz mm -hmm. like a loser. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. And then we have Jesse and Michelle at their house, I think. They're talking about the Capri dinner. Right. Um, and they're also talking about a text that Michelle got from Kristen. Yeah. Which was kind of interesting. What do you think about the text? Well, I thought that it was a low-key threat. I think mm. Kristen is saying like, hey, just so that you know, I will always keep your secrets. And even though we fall, I'm paraphrasing, even though we fall out, like there are th so many things that I know, but I'm not like that for my own mental health. I'm not the kind of person who's just going to go tell other people about that. I'm going to protect you still. Yeah. So the underlying threat is that I know all this shit about you, Michelle. So tread lightly because yeah. I could tell people who you really are. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about like, do you think it's fucked up that Kristen's kind of low key threatening her? Because I'm kind of like, I love it. I like it too. <laughs> I, I don't like these two. <laughs> Me neither. I mean, I like Michelle more than I like Jesse because he's an absolute trog. Uh, for sure. But I don't like either of them, especially how they treated Kristen at the dinner. I thought it was déclassé and fucked up. Agreed. And then Jesse makes a weird comment to Michelle while she's talking about Kristen, like, "Oh, I thought you were so fucking hot at the Capri <gasps> dinner when you stood up and you were yelling at everybody." And in his interstitial, he's like, "I wish she'd do that in the bedroom." I wish she'd. Be, I wish she'd be more physical like that in the bedroom. We'd have six kids by now okay always dick. equating it back first of all to sex and also to the shit that she's not doing yep. and how she's lacking yep constantly that's all their relationship is i don't know how michelle tolerates that she barely does i, I think mean, she hates him oh totally as they're filming now at the beginning of this season she's hating him one thousand percent i'm i'm waiting to see their divorce dump his ass please and then we have jason and janet at their house and they're also discussing the party and discussing Kristen telling Michelle that she's protecting her and Janet's like that's a threat mm -hmm. but she's bitter about it because yeah. she started this whole thing and mm -hmm. she's trying to like I think trying to clean it up for herself so well, it works yeah out for and her. continue to hide behind her pregnancy as if anybody gives a fuck and Kristen even says in her on the couch interview, she's like, I mean, we all understand you're pregnant and we care about that. But like, if you're going to be out here being a bitch, I'm going to call you a bitch. And that's just how it is. Yeah. And I 100% agree. Yeah. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you can't be a bitch. No. Jeez. And then we have Luke and Kristen at their apartment and they're kind of talking about how um, Kristen made up with Zach. So Zach, I guess, admitted to Kristen. Yeah. Like Jana's the one that started it. Like we shouldn't have like spread it around. But like they're friends again. Right. I think he's still maintaining that he never used the word racist. Yeah. That might be the one word that Kristen like took liberties on and said when nobody 
actually said that. I mean, mm-hmm. I think the energy was there, though. Oh, the for sure. The energy of the Republican to homophobic to racist pipeline was definitely present. Yeah. And I think Kristen extrapolated and then ultimately said the wrong thing. But I 100% believe that Zach and Jasmine and Janet were all implying that that's the way that Michelle was. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think you're right that they just never expected it to be outed on camera. Right. Like they were all definitely talking shit. Um, and they just, did, you know, let's just talk shit, but then put a face on for the right. valley. But right. no, we want the drama. And pretend they care. Like it's a yeah. teachable moment. She must got swept up in an algorithm. Kay. Okay, Janet, you hateful bitch. For real. And Zach with your hairline. Yeah. I can't. It was really yeah, He bad. never fully stands up for Kristen. No, I'm like, he doesn't. If, if he understands what he does because they have the conversation on Capri night, he's like, yeah, I did say those things. I shouldn't have said that. And I'm going to ultimately apologize to Jesse and Michelle. But like, you should have said something at the table. Yeah. You should have stuck, stuck up for Kristen the only person who did again was Nia but also we saw in this episode Jack stands up and he's like come on guys everybody's attacking one person this is not cool but it didn't help anything yeah Zach's not a good friend in short no he's also fake as fuck Mm -hmm. but then we have the guys going to um the county fair or whatever with in Danny's minivan and this is where like they start kind of talking about the dinner and Jax is like well yeah it's hard for me to stand up for Kristen when she does this stuff and I'm like okay so now you're throwing her under the bus when you are saying like of course he is he's a piece of shit and you've done 10 times a hundred times worse yeah what Kristen did and you did it on purpose 100%. 100%. And he's like, well, what kind of therapist is she even seeing? She needs a different therapist and really saying some foul shit about Kristen. And it was really unfortunate. I'm, they all laughing at her in the car. Yeah, I'm really hating how it's not only just Jax, but like Michelle later in the episode at the gala dinner or whatever, calling Kristen out and being like, you need help. You yeah. need to go to therapy. Um, Are you guys going to fucking therapy? Yeah. Are you doing any They're of the work? They're a life coach. They don't <laughs> see a therapist whatever yeah, who do you think you are michelle seriously your broken marriage and your abusive husband that you don't stand up to get fucked for real that we learn the real nature of your guys's relationship mm-hmm. at the gala dinner we'll get to right bitch. yeah god and then the guys also have to talk about their sex lives and stuff so jesse's talking about how michelle doesn't fuck him the way he wants anymore she used to come over in a trench coat it was so fucking sexy and now i can't even light a candle like as if that's the problem you're right. the problem dude a woman will fuck you if you treat her well she's going to want to be intimate with you mm-hmm. that's part of what a woman needs is that emotional connection which ultimately ends up in also a physical connection so if your woman doesn't want to fuck you that's because there's absolutely no emotional connection that means you're doing something wrong exactly but it's always just about sex with him yep it 100 is and then Jax talks about their sex life him and britney's and this is where danny is being so cool love oh my god he brings up love Adore. languages oh, he's like have you read the love language book yeah and jackson fucking jesse are like no what the fuck's that mm-hmm. like god you guys are the worst yeah how are you guys in your 40s and you haven't even heard about love languages i can't believe that they haven't and danny's like well it will teach you the way to communicate your love to your woman in a way that she can actually receive and, and appreciate what a king and <laughs> i know and jack's like where do you do that at cvs where do you get that test at cvs just dumb absolutely no incentive or inspiration to want to do any of that they're going to be alone forever Mm -hmm. i mean seriously yeah and then we have luke and Kristen going to dinner and they were kind of like this was kind of boring a little bit they were talking about like their future and like he doesn't want to live in la and she doesn't want to he wants to get the fuck out right now i can't blame him of la and he also says that 90 percent of people in la suck shit it's true and he thinks his friend group it's not true (laughs) (laughs) he thinks his. i think and i was reading somewhere maybe it was on the valley subreddit but like there were a bunch of Californians there saying like actually native Californians are awesome. It's well, the yeah. transplants. It's the people yeah. moving to LA to become a model or an actress or right. a studio director that absolutely suck. But I know a lot of Californians who are actually very cool and you're yeah. from the Pacific Northwest. So you know, that's true. Look, I've been to California a million times. California used to be really cool back in the day. And now there's a lot of shit going on and a lot of human shit everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actual human I shit mean, going on. And like, we all know the problem is all the people moving to fucking California and yeah. all the pieces of shit and stuff. So, so don't take any hate in the comments well, It's also right the now. vapid culture yes. of California and Correct. in particular Los Angeles where you have all of these superficial vapid people doing 
um, draconian, monstrous plastic surgery to their face so they can look like just another Kardashian knockoff who have no personality and I dare say no soul for living in one place and functioning as an echo chamber where they can't have any divergent opinions and thoughts. And so this is the group we're looking at who I think are actual people but feel so desperately the need to conform to this superficiality. Yes, preach. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, that's why people don't like California yes. it's because of the people on this cast right you see humanity in Kristen yes. the thing about Kristen is she's fucked up a lot for sure but I have too same we all have fucked up and made really bad choices yeah. in men and in people and in moments right and so we're watching her human redemption arc or just her her journey right and it's interesting but if you're gonna act fake with your fucking um dinner coat Jesse, with Ugh. your pompadour, your fucking hair, Such a and loser. your beautifully poised and coiffed wife who can't stand to have the word racism associated with her, even if it's not true. Like these people are so pretentious. They don't know how to have actual conversations, which makes this riveting. Yes. Which makes this riveting. But that's why people don't like California. It's not yeah. because of the Californians. I'm just going to advocate. Yeah, no, that's fine. Because yeah. of the vapid assholes right. who populate agreed. California. Yeah. Agreed. And I can't blame Luke for being like, yeah, fuck this. I don't want to live here. But then Mm -hmm. Kristen's like, I don't want to move anytime soon because I've moved three times in a year, which I mean, makes sense. But I'm like, she doesn't want to go to Colorado. Well, that sucks. Now she's got a job with the Valley and she's like, I can't leave now. This is like my only income. That sucks because I feel like Luke's actually good for her. And I think he actually cares about her. And I think she'd fit in great for Colorado. I think she'd live her best life there. Mm -hmm. And like Luke seems to really love her. And then they also talk about how he's a Lothario and he's got got a a big big old dick dick and he's got that high libido. 32 years old like a big charging libido and they're fucking multiple times a day i guess according to Kristen, need to picture that why not well i'm just happy that (laughs) Kristen is sprung and thinks he's hot as hell i personally think he's a translucent person (laughs) that like if i squint i can't actually see he's an invisible person he's a pink person well you're not into blondes when he wears pink all he is is pink all he's (laughs) fucking pink (laughs) yeah but maybe he's got a big old throbbing column of a dick that covers a multitude of sins honey you got a big old johnson give it to me baby yes i mean i want kristen (laughs) to be happy but i think she's being unrealistic i mean luke in this conversation is also mentioning like it costs a lot to have a kid and you want to have this kid in california where like it's gonna cost like a million years tuition at a university to send our kid to preschool yeah like it's doesn't make a whole lot of sense but Kristen is like well but i love california it's where i'm from (sighs) cringe so she's not realistic no she's not but she means well i think too like she's like i just don't want to move and i get it but like whatever i'm sure we're gonna hear a lot about this throughout the season i think if the valley is not renewed i think she will probably end up in colorado <laughs> with luke uh, probably. this is the, probably the only reason she's still in california probably yep and then we have Brittany and danny going to set up a romantic date for yeah luke and Kristen. because luke i guess called up danny and was like hey bro can you like throw some rose petals and light some candles for me at the apartment because, because she's bang. obviously in yeah we're gonna fuck a lot i want to inseminate her and danny being the king that he is he's like absolutely i will totally do that i'm like i love you i mean he's the, he's the like shining hope <laughs> That humans exist in yes. California. He's such a sweet dude. And He's so, a great person. He loves his wife so much. Oh my God, he <sighs> treats her so well. You know he eats that box for hours. He treats her so Probably. well. Probably. She's Miss America or Universe or I something. Mean, I mean, he's so grateful. Of course. He's, and he's handsome. I just he love is. the whole union. I We probably need more of them, but they're so boring. Uh, they're so there's, real. There's no drama. Yeah. There's like nothing going <laughs> on, but they are a great juxtaposition, like a compare yes. and contrast to the rest of the shitty, shitty people on this show. When all of their relationships are falling apart, maybe not Kristen and Luke, like they're probably going to be fine. But, but like, will. It's probably He's 32. Be. He's it's yeah, gonna fall apart totally and Kristen, get your shit together yeah. when i heard she was in therapy for nine years i know i was like, like damn why are you still acting a little nutso though girl you can tell people over and over and over again how to fix their fucking problems like we say on this podcast all the time it doesn't mean they're gonna do it no and so that therapist is probably like oh this girl again <laughs> she's probably like yes <laughs> perpetual therapy for the rest of her Forever. life my bills are paid yes <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> but it's really sweet. So Brittany and uh, Danny go over to their apartment. They get everything set up. They got rose petals. They got candles. They got a massage chair. They're going to fuck They're going to fuck, yeah. He's going to stick it in. Rub it around. And make her feel good. Ooh, yeah. Yes. We, we, we love some good sex for some I mean, good people. I love it for them. Yeah. But what's really sad about this whole scene is Brittany being so desperate <laughs> she's just like i wish Jax would do this for me i wish he'd be more romantic for me man I'm, i wish i had rose petals i'm just like oh god danny probably feels so fucking awkward with this can we sidebar and talk about <laughs> britney's tits though <laughs> like yeah do you want this uncensored yeah <laughs> he sucks all right back from uncensored we were talking about how britney's like sad and she's like maybe i should take a picture of all of these candles and rose petals and like the lengths to which luke is trying to please Kristen and send it to jack so so sad he can get a clue and maybe try to save our marriage yeah and he's not gonna care (laughs) even if you did that he'd be like absolutely not what am i looking at i don't care right he's not gonna do it so then after they set that up you know Kristen and luke go back and they bang all night because she's ovulating yeah they and get right up on that massage table oh girl and he's getting it in sticking it in yep. girl conceiving it child yes hopefully hopefully maybe who knows yeah and then we get to the charity gala make a match gala yeah whatever Every, find a match gala all, all these fake ass people are going there with their like God. beautiful dresses and they're shoot like shoot me in the head we're right making now. a difference we're making a difference <laughs> even though like jack's on the way there is like don't donate more than two hundred dollars because right. we have bills to pay and you just bought two handbags <laughs> so that you can keep up with the joneses and pretend that we're making money when this is really literally our last hope of making any kind of an income in this town <laughs> Because I didn't invest anything in that bar. It's just my name. <laughs> Nothing at all. Yeah. It's cringe, dude. But they get there and they've got tables arranged already so people can be separated because, you know, they're adults, but they can't talk to each you other. Know, Janet wanted to make sure that Kristen was not seated where she didn't want her. So Janet is talking to the organizer of the Mega Match Gala, <laughs> who used to be Kristen's roll tight homeboy, but who Janet has stolen away. Uh-huh. And we have a flashback of him talking to Janet about about how Kristen's texting him saying like where are we sitting and stuff like that so she's colluding with the organizer to mm-hmm. make sure Kristen isn't where she wants to be which is shitty it's yep. shitty Janet you're fucking petty and shitty just grow up seriously and so Kristen comes on in and she's trying to find out where she's seated and she's seated next to Brittany and Jax and then we have the conversation between what well, we have to talk about Jesse's jacket stupid fucking jacket and his bow tie gotta be the center of the attention oh my main character in the room zach the token gay (laughs) being like he looks like he's stuck in the 80s and he just went and sorted a line of cocaine in the bathroom i'm like yes "Yes." i it's totally he looks like a fucking dork and then compare him with danny who shows up in like a little tux or something he's hot looks fantastic yeah but jesse cannot suffer not being the person who gets the most attention in a space or in a room. Oh, yeah. And he's insufferable. He's totally. Like, so it's insupportable. He's insufferable. Yes. And his he wife really looks is. beautiful in her gold dress, though. I will I say. I mean, she's yeah. hot as fuck. God, I wish she was nicer. I know. I wish she was a good person. For real. Who wasn't a bigot. <laughs> Seriously. Was a Mexican Iranian bigot? I know. I'm married to a pretentious Allegedly an I kid. I kid. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> She's gorgeous, though. She is. Totally. And I think Zach sits at their table with Michelle and Jesse and all them. And this is where he like apologizes for his hand and the whole very vaguely without yeah. actually specifying the shit that he said and totally. or did but again they yeah. don't care because nope. the problem was that it was on camera yes and this is where zach like kind of sets up the last scene of the episode which is him suggesting that jesse and michelle just talk with Kristen, just hear her out she wants to apologize i've talked with her would you guys be willing to do that and both jesse and michelle are like not into it but like yeah, jesse's okay. like Jesse's like, just get me my margarita and then I'll go out there Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, But before that, Janet asks 
Michelle about their love story because we all want to know how Jesse and Michelle met, which nobody cares. What we want to know is why Michelle is with such a douchebag like Jesse. Like, how did the fuck that did that happen? I know. And she like talks about it at the table. She's like, oh, yeah. She's very disparaging. She is. She's very disparaging. I mean, she's not overtly rude, but she's uh, the undercurrent of disparagement. Oh, totally. I live for it. Totally. Because she talks about how they got set up on a date or whatever. But then in her interstitial and in her real story, she's like, yeah, so he was a one night stand a booty call he was a booty call and i knew he wasn't the one she says that she says that in her interstitial i'm like so then you had a kid with him yeah why also she says to the table of everyone there with everyone there that um he just talked about himself the entire time that they met and like she cut the date short i think went home then she got horny she called him he showed up took off her jean shorts and they started banging and the rest is history yeah but I'm like, wh- why would you build a life with someone who foundationally is so toxic and flawed? Does he got a great dick game or something? Uh, really? I, I guess he's functionally handsome. I told no, you he reminds not. me of an ex. Don't say it. I'm not. Gonna- I told you he reminds me of an ex. And so there's like no world in which I'll ever think highly of him at all. He's repugnant and repulsive to me. A vile creature <laughs> that I judge harshly. I hate him. <laughs> but um, How? how i don't get it i don't think he's good in bed at all honestly i think he's the kind of guy that's like it's my pleasure or no pleasure like i don't think he knows where the little man in the boat is i don't think he cares at all no i think he's a piece of shit but that's why i'm like michelle take some ownership for like the choice you made why would you call this doofus for a booty call you are literally so gorgeous anybody anybody else anyone Literally any guy would want to and be And now with you're you. going to raise a beautiful young woman with, with this, this misogynist. I just So can't. she's going to learn how to tolerate misogyny from other douchebag fuckboys. Right. Like make it make sense, Michelle. You seem like an intelligent person who might have some bigoted um, attributes, but like I'm not going to judge you or something <laughs> like that. But, but I mean, you're a beautiful person. You have a beautiful child. You mm-hmm. seem like a great mother. Like what are we doing here? Yeah. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. But she tells them all, the whole love story and then they eventually jesse and michelle go outside with his margarita to go and talk with Kristen. give me one margarita <laughs> two margarita yeah yeah so they go out to go talk with Kristen, and of course zach's got to be there as like the mediator and Kristen like looks directly at michelle touches her arms she's like i am sorry i'm really sorry I, you mean the world to me i didn't want to hurt you michelle i'm sorry i repeated yes what i heard and then Michelle's like, that's the problem is you're using that word again. Repeat. And then Kristen says, well, I mean, I heard it from Jasmine. And then she immediately says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then Jesse's like, oh, God damn. I know. As if we can't invoke the name of Jasmine or we can't discuss the fact that this was a game of telephone and that she got the info. We can't say any of that. It just has to all be Kristen's fault all the time. Of course, because she's the only one that did anything wrong. Even though like Michelle and her talking head during the scene is like, I know everyone talked about it. Like, I know everyone said something, but they're not saying anything about it. So, you know. That Zach and Jasmine and Janet were all talking about you behind your back. Mm -hmm. But still, in this scene, you're wanting Kristen to take 100% ownership over it. And there's something that's so gross to me about taking somebody who is trying to apologize, and I would dare say even groveling before you, trying Mm -hmm. to make amends with you and treating them so coldly. Yes. Like you're not a good person. Nope. Like there are different ways that you can, and if you're not ready, if you do need space, there are things that you can say to take care of yourself and to take care of the other person in that moment instead of coming off so fucking cold and judgmental. I know. Such a bitch. I'm so side-eyeing Michelle. Me too. I'm like, I'm wondering if everything they're saying about you is true. I think it is. And I think you're mean. Yep. I think so too. And I think Jesse, you're awful. You're He's a ape terrible. man. You're a trog. You're a <laughs> og make fire. You're a dope. You've got no substance. <laughs> no and even in this scene he's like i'm an adult so i guess i'll like forgive her but i'm never gonna trust her again i'm like you're not a fucking adult when and you're like cares. screaming about it nobody no one cares nobody cares about you at all yeah nobody said anything about you no it's not your apology to accept you dope he's a fucking narc I he's a piece him. of shit <laughs> god i hate him he's <laughs> useless he is he's like everything that's wrong with men him and jacks for sure 100 percent. and they're gonna end up fucking single tom sandoval yeah tom schwartz <laughs> They're everything that's wrong with the men except the danny 
Danny's the only shining light. And Luke. And Luke. I mean, Luke has his issues, though. I mean, I think there's probably more to come about Luke. We haven't gotten to the Maybe, bottom of yeah. what motivates Luke. But, I mean, my husband, he's such a beautiful man. I know. I want to see more men on TV like my husband who right? takes care of his woman. Yep. Who is a kind person, who's protective. Like, these men are the worst. The I worst. <laughs> totally. It's these elder millennial men specifically. Is it? Yeah. What I think, does that mean? I don't know. What's, what's an elder millennial versus a younger millennial, which you are? What well, is, I'm like at the very tail end of millennials. You're practically a Z. People keep saying Lizard. I'm a Z. I'm like, rude. Rude. <laughs> but no, elder millennials are like the fucking worst because they always make everything about themselves. They're always like victimizing themselves. Nobody likes them. And they're fucking cringe. And they're pretentious. Are no they offense. the children of boomers? Uh, No, Gen X. No, Gen X are I'm the I'm the oh well the elder of a younger millennial slash Z. I think they're the child. They're forties. They're the children of boomers. They're the most selfish fucking yes. generation ever. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. So self absorbed, and so yes. I think we're seeing some of that. Yeah. In this elder millennial representation, vis a vis the Valley. Totally. It's not everybody, of course. No. There's a lot of great people out there, and you're probably one of them listening. Yeah. But like, and you're great. Is, this is the worst of them is all I'm saying. Totally. And maybe they're not elder. Maybe they're elder slash young Gen X. Maybe. So don't, don't, all y'all Don't come for me. <laughs> I know that's just you trying to come for me. Okay? And just play yeah, it. I know you're playing. And just play it. But yeah, that was it. Was that it? Yeah. Is that how we ended? Yeah, it was With pretty much how we her ended. Or not really accepting the apology and then them just walking away? Yeah. And Kristen's like, I get she needs space or whatever because Kristen's trying to be understanding. Yeah. Those nine years of therapy are, are paying off a mm -hmm. little bit. Yep. And Michelle's like, I don't fucking believe her. I think she's a lying snake. Okay, whatever. Right. We think you're a bitch. Yep. <laughs> That's And it. other things. Yeah. <gasps> okay. That's well, it. Any final thoughts about the episode before we get on out of here girl well i thought it was better than vpr this week a little bit mm. like and it's like there's some new stuff there's some underlying yeah. shit that i'm kind of digging like mm -hmm. Brittany and jacks and their impending divorce and right. michelle and jesse and their horrible marriage and they're gonna get divorced so i just hope we get to see that through in this season yeah i wonder if valley will be coming back i think so i, I think hope the ratings so. i think the ratings from last week um, were really, really good. Really? Uh, were they higher than VPR and or definitely the highest of the season yet, but it's only Dang. been three episodes, four episodes. But yeah, I think the ratings are pretty impressive. So they'll probably get a second season. And I'm just here for the downfall of Janet. Me too. That's what I'm here. That's what got me invested yes. in all of this. For sure. Um, but I am, I am liking it. Me too. All right. Well, I was going to say something else. What was it? Oh, Jesus. I'm drinking. I can't. There we go. You drunk. Yeah, I drink. I start talking about all these things. Well, whatever. <laughs> um, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It Bye. really helps us grow the pod. So thank you so much in advance. We will be back next week starting with Seeking Sister Wife, yes. which is a fun time. Are you Lit. in the dumpster with us for that? Because you should. Be. I know there's like a delineation between TLC and Bravo, but like it's all family here. Yeah. And we have so much fun. So do join us for that. Yeah. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace. Bye. Bye, guys.